this is something that I wear very close to my heart. It's actually my soul. This is who I am. My story also has a journey, and it starts off, I, I was born in Bangalore and raised in Hyderabad, and we were an all-women home. It was only dad there. And I grew up to go to a school which is an all-women school, and a college which is all-women. And here I had my sister. She was a twin. I was born with a twin. I'm the first born, and I shadowed her all my life. These were my comfort zones. These were the zones that I didn't have to take any challenge. And I also played cricket, again in an all-girls team. And this, because my sister was very interested in cricket, it was not me. So I would shadow her, tail her, because to me, life outside home, comfort zone, was very daunting. It was not easy for me to face life. And I was this kind of person who just wanted to stay within the comforts of home because of something that happened when I was very young. And then I got married, wonderful man, entered a family, very loving, again in my comfort zone. Here is where I had lovely children very early in my life. And again, no challenges because my husband took care of everything and I didn't step out of the house without anyone with me. This is who I was. And the biggest challenge in my life was my wild child. He threw everything that I could not deal with. He's the one who brought worry, anxiety. I was paranoid. I was wondering where he was going. I created something called a backache because I didn't want to deal with him. And this was the final thing because I was going down in the dumps. I was low self-esteem. There was nothing in me that felt good. I was not a good mother. I was probably not even a good wife. I don't know. My husband never complained. And then, and then yes, uh, from there, I decided at one point of time that I let go. I let go of him. I let go of myself, liberate him, liberate myself. And what woke up was the whole world outside my home. This is where I stepped out. And this is where I found a new meaning in life very late. I'm 54. This was 10 years back. And my first baby steps outside the community project where I volunteered to be the class teacher's assistant in a program called Balajana Graha. I worked with the kids for seven long years. And in the second step, I met Dr. Minakshi, and we were looking at how the water rolls are so bad, how do we reform, what can we do, because the water percentage was so low, we found that the rolls were very badly maintained. So we spent three months just to rectify and correct one water booth. And that, a dramatic increase in the water percentage, from 45% through the city, we achieved 65% because we had correct water lists there. And this gave me such a strong reason to believe in myself that there is something that I can contribute to the society. And then there came another project for recycling. So we were looking at how we could just recycle paper. They said that if you can just uh, you know, save one ton of waste paper. In India, nobody ever throws newspapers. We are not even talking about newspapers. They said if we could save that, we will be looking at how we could recycle the whole thing. And then came the kids in my building, and uh, these kids were very excited about going and talking to everybody to start saving their paper. And we did great work, went around, and these girls actually gave me the strength to believe that this is something that we can take on. And these kids in Galia today are all over the world. They're doing things which they love doing, and this is the biggest motivation for me to stay in this field and do something for the society. Then came the big team, and it was in Bangalore, people from different uh, locations, all looking at how we can actually start to recycle, came together, and we looked at garbage as a big issue, and that needed, it was an issue, it was a problem, and it needed solutions. So we worked together to make, understand, and get Bangalore to be waste sensitive. And we wanted to first check out where does our waste go. So we landed up in the landfill. Landfill is not scientific at all. It's a land dump. Because a scientific landfill is 
It can only take certain capacity, but Bangalore was generating more than 4,000 tons of waste. And where was it all going? It was getting dumped. And we found that in the landfill, there are issues of environment, pollution, groundwater getting affected. Even the villages around had huge problems because they could not live a normal life. And what we couldn't deal with our backyard, we were putting into somebody else's back backyard and troubling the society there. Many men couldn't get married because no woman wants to come and live in that stinking mess. This is what the villagers go through in any land up in and around Bangalore or anywhere in the world. So we were looking at how we could reverse the trend. Right now, 90% of what we generate as waste goes to the landfill. Only 10 is getting recycled by great champs like the rat pickers and people who really care and keep their recyclables away from the landfill. We looked at reversing the trend. So we needed to get a campaign going. And the first part, even managing waste, well, the first part is to reduce. So we looked at how we can get eco-friendly weddings, parties, events, and also a practice. I, I can never leave, none of us can ever leave our homes without our cell phones, without our keys, car keys, home keys. So the same way I practice carrying what I can refuse. I don't pick up any paper cup or a plastic cup not even a plastic straw. I make sure that I carry, I have a steel straw right there. So I don't use paper napkins. So it's a practice that we all try to, you know, uh, keep, keep in so that we make this difference. And people always think paper cups are very eco-friendly. But then you can see, I put my paper cup in my compost and I could see a thin film of plastic. So it is ending up somewhere. If it is not getting recycled, it's definitely harming your environment. And this is what trash is all about. It's all over. And how can we change the mind of people to manage this trash? We were looking at, instead of putting them into bags, give them a uniform, color-coded segregation system. Then came a group of very active citizens. This whole thing is about citizen initiatives. They came up with a two-bin, one bag as a solution. So you segregate your garbage and make sure that they are put in the right, right streams and most of it goes for recycling. And of course, we have people like Rahul Dravid endorsing our campaign. And 60% of your waste is kitchen waste. That doesn't look like kitchen waste, it looks like food. It's something that's left over for my food, and this is something that I can never look at as garbage. It is a resource for me, and what do I do with that? I convert it into compost. And this compost is something that we can put to our plants and make good soil. But I was an epic failure in the first attempt to compost. I, it was a stinking mess, but I had one big reason to continue to compost, learn compost, and make sure that I make that difference by not sending my waste to the landfill. That was the only reason why I had to succeed in composting. And then I started making pots of gold. This is called the black gold. And uh, I started to experiment with composting. There are five different composting methods that I do and my terrace has become a learning center. In fact, a lot of vendors come and give me their, you know, they, they, want to, they want me to experiment with their systems. So I have, you can see so many systems around in my house which uh, composting is happening. And earthworms are my best friends. I'm almost, I'm almost called like worm rani. And uh, yeah, so uh, I scare people, but children love to, you know, play with earthworms, and this is something that we've been doing. And uh, you can see the different slides. I have rural farmers who are all chemical, you know, they grow food and chemicals coming and visiting me and asking me how I compost. And of course, people from outside the country come and visit me. Children with differently abled children also love, you know, this is something very therapeutic for them. So they come to my house and we see compost together. And of course, in a lot of, so, and leaves again, a big part of the, uh, you know, composting processes we shouldn't waste. And also through, you know, the social media, YouTube, I could reach out to different people in, in the society. It has, the videos that have come up, this video has al almost got 127,000 as viewership, and then another company came and they did another video, and 155 for this. So the education goes through even YouTube. So this has been something that I have been enjoying doing, and I became an urban farmer because I had so much compost to do, I had not grown one single plant. But then I came, yeah, I came in touch with a group of people, uh, the urban gardeners in Bangalore, and I exchanged compost for seeds, and that's the first garden that I made. So I completed the cycle of life right there, 
And uh, these are the few things that I grew on the first attempt, and then went on to continue growing good stuff, exotic stuff, and it became an experiment for me. That, that, that may, you never find so many kinds of brinjols in the market, yeah, and the kind of beans. So it has been fun because growing your own food is the most important thing for any urbanite right now. Because we would have a lot of money in the future. I don't think we'll have, we can't eat money. We have to buy good food. There's no good food around. So we have to grow food. So you can see the amount of chemicals that we find in our food. So this is something, you make tasty food, and it, is, uh, it comes off your garden. You know the safest food is what you can grow. And your meal is healthy. And of course, we did a lot of campaigns. We had stalls, talking nonstop. We were called the trash talkers. And uh, in the Coven Park, and uh, a great team came together uh, to teach people. I, it's not teaching, it's more sharing our experience. So we have a whole day workshop going, and we do uh, campaigns, we do funky stuff, you know, and go to corporates and talk about composting, and uh, go, this is Shishi School, and go and talk to them about it. And young children come to my terrace, and uh, it's, it's so much fun, and also uh, there's so much learning, sharing, and uh, this has become a big part of my life. Of course, these are the composting workshops, visitors, and of course, social media. So the Facebook group is an active uh, you know, community which handholds people who need help in, in, in any, any of these issues. So there are a lot of messages that go through that. This is the green map with the solid waste management roundtable has brought in. These are the different communities in Bangalore who are actually recycling and composting. So it's a huge thing in Bangalore today, and we are very proud to be a part of this. And Thank you. Uh, today, uh, on 2nd of October, it was Gandhi Jayanti, and uh, we started our own revolution uh, called the Swachagraha. And uh, this is a pledge and a challenge for people. We want to throw a challenge at you, saying that if you could just keep one week's organic waste away from the landfill and compost it, how would it be? Would you understand, learn, fail? It's okay to fail. And then, say, I have made a difference to this world. I started composting, and then everything follows. I would like to all of you to stand up to take the pledge. If possible, please stand up, and we'll take a pledge that we will take this as a challenge. One week, just for one week, please learn how to comp compost and keep that organic waste that you throw away. It's so valuable. So let's take a pledge to compost one week's organic waste. Thank you so much. And it is the environment that you remember. This is the environment that needs this. Thank you so much. And please go ahead and pick champs in your communities and make sure that all of us do something for the future of this planet. Because the future is not ours. It is borrowed from the youngsters who are ahead of after us. Thank you so much, and thank you for the standing ovation. <laughs>